welcome back or simply welcome if this is the first time that you have joined us. I believe God has a very special word for you today, especially in the season the world finds itself today. It's a word that will encourage you and a word that will uplift you. This is the Anointed Makazi, the vast video archives of Bishop Dragwood Moses' teaching and preaching ministry. Now today's sermon is entitled, You Shall Have Food and Raiment. Now food and raiment or food and covering constitutes one of the most basic human rights. And in so serving God, there are basic things that you are due and entitled and what God will give you simply by accepting him as your Lord and personal savior and following the call of God on your life. Now in this message, Bishop Dagwood Moss will teach us on what man constitutes as basic and compare that with what God will constitute as basic simply by following him. So be blessed as you watch this message. Psalm 23, I shall not want. Amen. And um, this is a very important series. You are not going to need things. Amen. Okay, so I started with the first part, which was so many ways by which God is going to provide for you, how you are going to experience, I shall not want. Be able to say, I shall not want. That is one. Number two, I went on to teach you about, you shall build a house. Is that not so? Which is the second part of the message. And I also showed you some steps by which you will be able to build a house. How many are taking those things seriously? Huh? Take it seriously so that in the next few years, you'll build houses. Because if you don't build, I'm telling you, people are building. So decide to be one of the people who will build a house. If I had heard this message earlier, I would have built houses by now. Amen. The next thing we are moving on is to the next part of this series, which is you shall have food and raiment. You shall have food and raiment. You shall have food and raiment. All right? Now, let's all turn our Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And we want to read verse number 6. But godliness actually, hmm, it says it's a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. Are you there? 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. Can we all read together? Ready, go. Verse 7. Verse 8. Verse 9. Amen. Now, let me, let me read. Uh, let's read verse 10. Ready, go. Amen. Now, now can I read from my Bible? You know, I'm, I'm going to preach for just about five minutes, ten minutes. So just listen very carefully, okay? Don't, don't go to bed. Fourth service, you like going to bed sometimes. So listen, let's be very serious, okay? All right. I'm going to read from my Bible because you'll understand it better this way. But godliness actually is a means of great gain when it is accompanied by contentment. In other words, you, you, you are, you are really, you've really got a lot when it's, your godliness is accompanied with, by contentment. Verse 7. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. Verse 8. And if we have food and covering, covering, with these, we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil 
and, by, and some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many a pound. Amen. Amen. Is it not a nice reading? Huh? Some who have long after it have pierced themselves. They have wandered away. Now, this scripture, food and raiment, means food and covering. My version says food and covering. All right. Now, I'm going to show you five or six or seven things that food and raiment mean. And then I'm going to show you how you are going to get them. Amen. Or why you are going to get them. Number one, it means you shall have the basics. So I'm giving you the meanings of you shall have food and raiment. Number one, it means you shall have the basics of life. The basics of life. Number two, it means you shall have your needs or necessities met. Your needs met. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. The next one is you shall have what belongs to you. What belongs to you. What has been given to you by God. Hallelujah. What has been given to you by the Lord? Amen. Are you there? God has given us many of these things already. The next one, you shall have what it takes to live. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 tells us God has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. So whatever it takes to live, you are going to have it and you have it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, how many do you have? Number five, you've got your basics, your necessities. Have you got that? What belongs to you? Have you got that? What it takes to live, have you got that? The next one is you are going to have your desires. Your desires. Because God wants to give you the desires of your heart. The Bible says God delights to give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? God desires to give you that God wants to give you the desires. The Bible says he has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Mark 11 verse 24. The Bible says God has. Are you listening to me? God has given us his desire, our desires, what things whoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, your desires, and you shall have them. Can I have an amen? Amen. And finally, um, you shall have what it takes to work. Amen. To work. That is number what? Six. All right. Number six, you shall have what it takes to work. Because you see, you, a naked person cannot go to work. A hungry man cannot work anymore. Amen. And the last one is you shall have your human rights. Now, I am going to read to you what is your right as a human being. Okay? Now, this is not somebody who wants to be too rich. You see, because many people are confused when they say, you are going to have a house. It's like you are, you, are, you, are, you are just teaching riches and prosperity. No. You are teaching just basics. So when I say you shall have food and raiment, I'm talking about basics. So let's define what are the basics. Not defined by Doug Heward Mills or defined by uh, Mr. Clinton in America, but by defined by a body which is universal. The United Nations, which, de- which, which defines a lot of things you know, for us in the whole world. Are you listening to me? So let me give you your human... How many want to know your human rights? And if it is your right, will you go for it? Uh, If you don't want it, you can stay. But uh, listen, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the United Nations has stated in simple and clear terms the rights which belong, everybody say belong, belong, equally to every person. 
These are these rights belong to you. They are your rights. Familiarize yourself with them. Help to promote and defend them for yourself as well as for your fellow human beings. Amen. Amen. Now, these rights I read, you see, I am reading from 1 Timothy 6, 8, which says, you shall have food and raiment. Having food and raiment, let us be content. In other words, if we don't have food and raiment, let us not be content. If we don't have food and a covering, don't be happy with it. Don't be happy with your situation. Because God is telling you what level you must attain. God is showing you your standard. Food and covering. Which are, it stands for the basics of life. So let's see your basics in this life. I'm going to give you the articles. Alright? Um... Number one, all human beings, Article 1, are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. All right? In other words, you are free and equal in dignity to other human beings. So if a white man can come to Ghana when he wants to come, then you as an equal human being should be able to go to his country when you want. It's your human right. So if somebody is believing God for a visa so that he can go to the white man's country when he wants, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's your right. It's just, you are just, what you are doing is you are going up from an inferior to an equal, because I don't know of any white man who cannot come to Ghana when they, they don't. They don't queue in any embassy to come to Ghana. They come when they want, and they are given visas when they when they are coming. Are you an equal human being? And they can afford it. We are coming to freedom of movement. It's it's you are equal. So if you, you should be able to do what other human beings in the world are doing. Amen. And, and God is promising you food and raiment. He says that that is the standard. I'm not talking about being rich, just being an equal human being. The next one. Every, um, let me just go on to some other ones. Article 13, everyone has the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. So if you want to move from a Zongo area to stay at East Legon, it's your right to be able to move freely within your country. So that you are not living where you are out of poverty, but out of your choice. Okay. Amen? Yeah. No, you see, we are very used to poverty. Have you seen cripples when they are walking with crutches? You notice that these muscles are very developed. They have developed compensatory strength in certain muscles because of their deficiencies. In the same way, we have developed compensatory things for all our deficiencies. So we, we, we live in places we don't want to live in, but we, we have to live there. There's nowhere else to go to. But God is showing us today that it's a basic right to be able to move. In America, people move to where they want to live. They, live, they go here if they want to go here. If they want to have these people as neighbors, they have them. If they don't like the neighborhood, they move to another neighborhood. Yeah, Pastor, if you don't like your neighborhood, you just move to another neighborhood. They can easily take a house, go here, come. Easily. Can you? Can you easily level? Can you easily move? Where's your house? Dan Soman. Can you easily move? It's not, it's not easy, but you shall move if you want to move in Jesus' name. How many are believing God for just human rights? The next human rights, the same Article 13, says that everyone has a right... To leave any country, including his own, and to return to his country. You have a right to leave. If you want to go out of Ghana and go to another country, 
It's your right. How many want to travel to America? Raise up your hand. Father, give them just food and raiment. We are not asking for any super extra miracles. Give your people basics. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Huh? The church is finished. The church is finished. <laughs> <laughs> now, you people want to leave me? Are you? Huh? Are you come back, isn't it? R- write it down. Everyone has the right. I'm giving you Article 13. Everyone, these are your human rights, according to First Timothy 6 8. Everyone has the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. That's number one. Number two is everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own country, and to return to his own country. Amen. How many are going to pray for basics from today? Let me give you... uh, Article 16. Men and women of full age without limitation due to race, nationality, or religion have the right to marry and to found a family. They are entitled to equal rights as to marriage during marriage and at its dissolution. We have a right to marry. Many people cannot marry even if they want to marry now but you have a right according to the united states to marry now if you are full age but many people cannot marry and do not marry because they don't have money to marry i was speaking to one of my church members in south africa and he said i said to him why are you not marrying and he he mentioned the amount that they have to pay as dowry is thousands of rands. I think it's about uh, some thousands. I think about 5,000. Huh? About $5,000 or something fantastic. It's not like our engagement in Ghana. So even if they want to, and I, I watch them and you see young people fornicating, having children out of wedlock and they have a right to be able to marry. You see, and that's the level that God wants to bring you up so that if you want to marry tomorrow, you can marry. Receive it. <laughs> you are late. <laughs> Article 17. Everyone has the right to own property alone as well as in association with others. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his property. Arbitrarily. You just get up and deprive somebody of his legal property which he has signed contracts with. And as, as, as taking, taking the property. You, you, it's a human right to have. How many want to have your own property in this life? Please, believe God with me. All the people here, there will be not even one person on the day of your death that you don't have a house. Everybody will have a house in the name of Jesus. You are here in life. You see that, Charlie, by the time that you are going, simple. We have a right to this food and we are not praying for it's not you see people can say the church is prosperity what that's a human rights i'm reading human rights look at it human rights read what do you read uh, say it to the mic universal declaration of human rights yeah. universal declaration of human rights next article article 23 Everyone has a right to work. You would have thought that it's obvious, but some people can't work. They, 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 they don't have anywhere to go to work. There's no job, unemployment. Do you know the, 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 the unemployment in Ghana, do you know the level? It's very, very, very high. Very, very, very high. The next one says... Everyone has a right to work, to free choice of employment, and then to just and favorable conditions of work, and to protection against unemployment. Everyone without any discrimination has the right to equal pay for equal work. All these things we don't have in Ghana. That is why doctors are running away from Ghana, because equal pay for equal work. When you work as a doctor somewhere, equal work, they get nothing. 
Another one, in verse 3, article 23. It says, everyone who works has the right to just and favorable remuneration, ensuring for himself and his family an existence worthy of human dignity and supplemented, if necessary, by other means of social protection. These are your rights. This one, we are not praying for, uh, what do you call it? Uh, give us uh, millions of... Just, Pastor to, the, what do you say? Right to just and favorable remuneration. The minimum wage of a Ghanaian is 4,000 200. So that is about 60 cents. Now, many years ago in this same country, or not many years ago, I, I think in 1992 or 93, the minimum wage was about $3. So even though the minimum wage has gone up in cities, it's actually, we are, we are getting poorer. Are they are now fighting for six. 6,000. Yeah. I pray for them. whoever is coming to this government next. <laughs> I don't know what will happen to them. Pastor, Big Daddy, you, you have that right. Favorable pay for your work. So if you are praying for a job which will give you so many millions, you are not praying for something that is beyond, you know, like some great thing that you, you shouldn't be asking for certain, you are thinking of too high, too many. No! You are just, eh, eh, read it. Where's the mic? Get me a mic, please. I think people don't believe what I'm reading. Somebody get me a mic. Everyone who works, uh, uh, read it, human rights. What, what is at the back here? Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Hey. All right. Read this one. This one here. Three. Everyone who works has the right to just and favorable remuneration, ensuring for himself and his family an existence worthy of human dignity. Worthy of human dignity. <laughs> what is human dignity? Huh? Are you going to queue when you have to go to the toilet? <laughs> Stand up and let me shake your hand. It's below your human dignity to queue, to go to the toilet. Yeah. Huh? Or to go on the beach. Yes. Or to go on the beach. Or to go on the beach. You go to the beach, no. You are down. And you are just doing whatever you want to do. No. Because there's no toilet in your house. Right now, we are getting into realities. Human dignity. I remember the first time I saw people queuing to go to the toilet just here in Collegono. We had had an all night. It was about 4 a.m. The line was about from here right up to where the tree is. Everybody was standing there with his, uh, his uh, paper. Give me a piece of paper. Everybody was standing there with this paper. I said, no. It's, it's below your human dignity. Because if you are going to the toilet, not everybody must know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You are bathing. Children bath, even grown-ups bath on the roadside, openly, openly on the roadside. You see them sometimes covered with white soap throughout. They are bathing. They covered themselves white. They are bathing. It's below human dignity. But we are used to it now. We are used to it now. And that's why I said before the elections that whatever we vote for, that's what we get. And whatever we get, we deserve it. Whatever comes, we deserve it. And what else is below human dignity? Sleeping on... Uh, 
Sleeping in front of shops. Sleeping in front of shops is below your human dignity. A, a families sleeping, let's say, 18 people in one room. Husbands and wives with their mother-in-laws and so on having sex just by each other. You know, the mother-in-law is there and the children are there. They use a cloth. A cloth. They say something. Pastor Eddie, what do you think? <laughs> Nobody hears the sound. Well, Because it's a large family. Before you realize there's a pregnancy. Before you realize there's a pregnancy. How does it happen? And when does it happen? What else is below your human dignity? No road to your house. Your house is just full of dust. Dust. Anything you have turns brown. Joblessness. You have a right to work. Me, I'm not preaching. And I decided, today I decided, like, I'll just come and read the human rights. I'm tired. I'll read the human rights. People don't believe that they are human rights. Going to what? Going to look for water. Going to look for water. Bucket. Going to toilet in the bush. It's not the right thing. Eating. I was once at Odona. I was at the fitness repairing my car. And then there were some guys who were eating kinky and fish. And I, I was, as I was watching, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You see, the fish was here, and then the kinky was here. And there were two guys eating, but there were about 17 flies which were eating with them. So when they put their hand in, then the flies go up like that. And when they take their hand, and then the flies come back. And they were, the, the flies were like next door neighbors who were coming. They were just, yeah, I eat, you eat. And it will go up, down, up, down. Shoo, 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 shoo. It's below your human. I mean, if, if I see a fly land on the food, I don't eat that food again. Even my own wedding lunch, when I saw a fly on the food, I didn't eat it again. Oh, yeah. Because flies are very dangerous. They sit on toilet, poo poo. And they have these little uh, 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 hairs on them that pick up the feces and the bacteria and so on and then they and then they also suck some in they have about four ways by which flies carry gems one is through the hairs one is by sucking i've forgotten the other four but there are four ways then they they land on your food and then they regurgitate the thing back and then they wrap on the what do you call it on it then you also come in and you, that's how you get typhoid thank you human rights next one article 25, uh, 24, everyone has the right to rest and leisure, including reasonable limitation of working hours and periodic holidays with pay. <laughs> Pastor Tu, have you been on a vacation with your wife? You are entitled to rest with your family. How many have been on vacation? In America, they go on vacation all the time. They say, I'm, I'm on vacation, I'm going to Barbados, I'm going to France, I'm going here. Everybody goes on vacation. We, we, are, we are so poor that when you say vacation, it's like it's out of the, we don't talk about holiday or vacation. Since I became a pastor, I've never been on leave. If, if I was to say that I'm going on leave, it's like, oh, many leave. If people will find it some way. But you are entitled, and that is why abroad, every, they travel. I was talking to one of my friends who works in a bank in Europe. He was telling me, people go on Friday, they fly, and they come back Monday morning, and they come straight to work. Almost every weekend, they just fly. The money, you are entitled to rest. I see you going on holidays to Spain and uh, Las Palmas and, and uh, uh, Cape Verde Islands, and uh, where, where do you want to go to? Caribbean Islands and... Mr. Johnson, where do you want to go? Middle East. Texas. Go to Israel. Join them. Join their fight. Hallelujah. The next article 25. Everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and his family. Including food, clothing, housing, 
medical care, necessary social services, and the right to security in the event of unemployment, sickness, disability, widowhood. What to you if you are a widow? You know, widows are some of the most pitiful people. Everybody comes around when they are, the funeral is, and then a few days after, after that, everybody forgets about them. Pray that you, you, you will not experience widowhood. But in this human right, if you are a widow, you are entitled to, and it's in the Bible that widows should be looked after. Amen. Amen. Motherhood and childhood. All children, whether born in or out of wedlock, shall enjoy the same social protection. If you are in America and they give birth to you, you know, your mother doesn't have a job, they will get milk, uh, food, things for you and for the baby. Clothes. The next one. Everyone has the right to education. Education shall be free. At least in the elementary and fundamental stages. Elementary education shall be compulsory. Technical and professional education shall be made generally available and higher education shall be equally accessible to all on the basis of merit. Is education available to all today in Ghana? Is it available to everyone? Is it available to you? When you, when you, when you qualify from your SSS, how many years? Coming to rest at home for two years and three years. And some people, when you ask them, how come your children are abroad? You have set up the Ministry of Education and whatever. Your children are abroad. And they have very rude answers. You don't even be patient to answer us decently. And they will give you some arrogance that we have. Now we have 20,000 people in university. 20,000 people in the same university, you have crowded eight people in. And you are using it as a statistic to say that education has improved. It's wonderful. These are basics. Hallelujah. And the last one is education shall be directed towards the full development of the human personality and the strengthening of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. It shall promote understanding, tolerance, friendship among all nations. Hallelujah. Parents have a prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children. You got a right, big daddy, to choose for your child. I want my child to go to Legon, but there may be no Legon. You got a right to choose for your child. I want my child to go to tech, but there may be tech may be full for the next three years. So when you are praying, that even you should be able to send your children abroad to school, it's not, it's a basic right now. It's become a basic right now. Reverend Saki, in a few years' time, your children will be going to, ready to go to university. Pray about it, because in 10 years' time, I wonder whether there, will, whether there will be 50 people. Some, now the verandas will be converted into, then you use a rope to come down from the rooms. Now the veranda will all be dormitories. <laughs> your parachute, use parachute to come from the top floor downstairs. Uh, every, every student will have to bring a parachute, his own parachute to school. <laughs> Amen. Where's my Bible? Who has my Bible? Ah, sorry. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. How many are ready for human rights? Basic things in your life. Basic things. Basics. Reverend Saki, I'm not talking about riches. Don't, nobody should say this is a prosperity church or we just want money. No, this are, I'm reading to you. How many realize that I'm reading to you from the basic human rights? These are basics. You shall no more queue for toilet in Jesus' name. You shall be able to choose where you want to live. God is going to give you a job that is good enough so that you will choose and say that this area, I don't like this area again. I'm moving to another area of Accra. Your standard, your human dignity is being elevated by God. The Bible says you shall, you shall have food you shall not want. In other words, you will not want the basic things. Food, raiment. This is not just remuneration for your hard work that you are doing. Just basic. For your contracts, basic pay. 
these days, when I'm dealing with people, I don't bargain much because I realize that in Ghana, most people, for all their hard work as either carpenters, contractors, masons, they don't get anything. I realize that even all the, it's almost they get nothing for all their hard work. And I, 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 my heart bleeds because I realize that people are working for nothing. You, you see the average mason, how hard they work. Ask whether they have anything. Nothing. But God is saying, you shall have at least the basic remuneration for your hard work. I see you receiving it in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word this morning. We give you praise and honor. We ask that your will be done in Jesus' name. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ today, you want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to be born again. I want to give my life to God. I want you to just raise up your right hand, and I'm going to pray with you. Just your right hand up high. It's your, it's your right not to go to hell. Because Jesus died for you. Mm. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. If you really want, want us to pray for you this Sunday morning, before we close the service, you want to say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to Jesus. You want to say, Pastor, I want, to, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. I want to be born again. With your eyes closed, I want you to lift your right hand. We pray for you wherever you are standing. Lift your right hand up high. We'll pray for you right now. God bless you. I see your hand, my brother. Lift it up high. Anybody else? You want to join? You want to lift your hands? I want to give your heart to Jesus. Wonderful. Right now, let's say this prayer together. Everybody say, Father, I receive Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. This afternoon, I believe in my heart. That Jesus died for me. Thank you, Jesus, for washing away my sins. From today, I am yours, and you are mine. I will follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And those of you lifted your hand there after service, we'd like you to come out here, right down. Um, somebody will talk with you. Amen. Please put your hands together for the Lord. You have been watching a message from the Anointed Magazine entitled, You Shall Have Food and Raiment. And I'm confident that after this message, you are encouraged and hopeful that God will take care of you and give you that which is basic to your existence and your needs simply by accepting Him as your Lord and personal Savior and following the call that He has upon your life. Remember, there are more videos to download from Dagwood Mills Videos Thank you for staying with us. I will see you soon for another life-transforming message from the magazine.